So this will be the instantaneous center of rotation. Center of rotation. So, okay, so let's see. Just a quick recap on instantaneous center of rotation. You've got, uh, you've got a rigid body that's moving. You know, it's got a rigid body that's moving. And you have, uh, um, you know, the velocity at one point, like VA. And you know the velocity at another, like in line, and it has a bigger magnitude VB. And then one way to locate the instantaneous center rotation is draw a line from, if you will, the tail of the vectors. This this is for parallel vectors, and then with the head of the vectors. And this this intersecting point would be the instantaneous center of rotation. Okay, for an instant. All right. So this is for uh, for parallel vectors okay on rigid body the magnitudes are different okay rigid body I think the the case that we've we've seen maybe that occurs most often is if you have a rigid body and then you have uh, um, you have a vector moving say here and then you have VA and then you have VB maybe moving this way VB right here and you have two non-parallel vectors, and what you do is you draw a per line perpendicular to each, a line perpendicular to each, and then the intersection is also ICR, okay? And at that instant, everything rotates about this right here with an angular velocity, okay? You know, and once you know this, once you know this omega, right? Once you know this omega for this right here, if I want to find the velocity over here, okay, if I know where this instantaneous center of rotation is and I want to find the velocity at point C, okay, I know already everything is turning, according to this drawing, everything is turning counterclockwise. And I know that this, this direction right here, this a straight line from ICR to point C is here. And that means that this point C is rotating in a circular path about the instantaneous center of rotation. Okay, so I, I, bam, you know, this tells me then, then shoot, this is, this velocity right here is 90 degrees to that, that arm, okay, and this is the velocity at C, at that instant, right, and I, and I just use geometry to figure all that out, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's going to be, a, whatever triangle that helps me figure that out, it's going to be available to me, and, and that's it, and the law of sines, the law of cosines obviously come into play here, so, so one thing you want to focus on, law of sines and law of cosines. So sine alpha over A, sine beta over B equals sine gamma over C. And then here this is like, uh, um, if this is alpha, this is A. If this is beta, this is B. If this is gamma, then this is C. Okay. And then what was the law of cosines? I, I, I shoot. It's like what? C squared equals A squared plus B squared plus or minus 2 AB cos gamma yeah something like that okay so verify that I don't I don't I don't know for sure but I think that's right because if cosine if gamma is 90 then this is zero and then it becomes Pythagorean theorem okay so that, that looks good okay all right so let's see let me see if I can if I think of something let's see let's look at like uh, uh, let's look at uh, oh I know something oh we did we look at how about uh, do you want like a piston? Do you want to do like a piston thing? Okay, let's do a piston thing. So here, like a, a piston. So I have a piston with a rotating here about, we'll call this A. This has like a pin, so it's just rotating. Shoot, let me, let me do that in black. Here, rotating. And I have here, and this has an angular velocity omega right here and it's attached to some link over here some link is attached to here and that moves let me make this kind of a straight line to something over here with a head here so and it's constrained to move in a straight path okay right here okay constrained to move in a straight path and there's omega uh, we'll call this point a B, and we'll call this point C, the piston point C, okay? So 
I, I want usually and basically what's given here are uh, the directions of B and C, right? I think that's that's yeah. The directions of B and C are given, right? An unknown here is the magnitude of C, and what this and the other unknown is. What is the other unknown here? You know the magnitude of B if you know omega. So let's say omega is like uh, one radian per second. One radian per second. That's one radian per second. Let's just call that one. Ra Oops. Let's call that one radian, one rad per second, right here. And 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 let's let's call this uh, let's call this radius one meter. Okay. So that that means you know the and if I give if I tell you. Uh, let's see, or if you if you're if you have to figure out, shoot at angle theta. So let's say at when, when, when theta equals let's use let's use thirty degrees, okay? Not forty five because that makes it too easy, okay? So let's use theta equals thirty degrees. That way I can check whether or not you you can test yourself whether or not you know your geometry, okay? Because that's usually where you get tricked, okay? When theta equals thirty degrees, it'll be find the velocity of C and the other unknown because you know the direction of C, right? Is now what is it? Pause for dramatic suspense. Yeah, it's the angular velocity of BC. Okay? Angular velocity of BC. Sweet. Okay, that's very good. And then here, let's call BC. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to take something out of my head, okay? <laughs> 10, uh, let's make this like 10 meters, okay? Keep everything like 10s and 1s and, and stuff like that, okay? <laughs> All right? 10 meters here, right? And, and shoot, theta equals 30, and I don't even know if this thing will actually occur, but who cares, right? Okay. So 10 meters right here, okay? So do you want, we can do this one of two ways. We can do relative velocity analysis or instantaneous center of rotation okay and so since we just talked about instantaneous center of rotation shoot let's do instantaneous center of rotation right oh okay shoot this is good this might get a little tricky okay let's see let's see what happens here okay uh, so here i know the velocity at b so let's find the velocity at b so velocity at b let's see vb i have uh, um, essentially here's a and here is b and I call, I'll put a little pin here. And here, this is omega, okay, of AB, of A, omega A. So velocity of B, this is 90. The magnitude is omega A times RAB, which, or RBA. And that is just one meter per second, right? And the angle, if this angle is 30 degrees here, then this angle is no this angle is 30 and this is 60 okay there you go right okay parallel axis parallel lines i mean parallel lines okay so 60 there okay so that means on my on my on my uh this this element this bc okay so on bc if i look at b and c here's b and here C, my velocity here, I don't know what the angle of BC is, but here, this velocity from the horizontal, this is VB, this angle is 60 degrees. Okay? That's 60 degrees. All right. And I've got to do a bunch of geometry to try to figure out what this angle is here. Okay? Yeah? Now I got to figure out what that angle is there. Okay? So let me, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do the law of sines. So law of sines, so this, I'll call this, what should I call that? I'll call that alpha, okay? So angle alpha is equal to, so here, the angle alpha is, let's see, sine, sine alpha over one meter is equal to sine theta over 10 meters, yeah? Okay, sweet. That's not too bad. Okay, so sine alpha is equal to one tenth sine of theta, which is 30 degrees, and then alpha by inverse sine comes out to some number, 
which I don't know, and I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to stop this for now.